Ips Engraver Beetle The Ips Engraver Beetle can be as destructive as the southern pine beetle if environmental conditions are favorable for attack. Ips, unlike the southern pine beetle, will only attack a pine tree that is declining or extremely stressed from some type of abiotic condition, such as extended root damage or prolonged drought. Because this beetle is not aggressive, the infestation does not generally spread to neighboring trees, creating a large contiguous group of dying trees. Instead, there will be scattered pines or clusters of pines that are infested. Like most bark beetles, the Ips beetle in particular plays a major role in forest succession. It helps destroy pines that are weakened or already dying from other primary causes. With three different species of Ips, a specific engraver beetle is basically identifiable by its size. All three species are reddish-brown to black, with a distinctive scooped-out and spined posterior. The largest Ips beetle is approximately one-quarter inch long and attacks the entire bole of the tree, while the mid-sized beetle is approximately one-eighth inch long and attacks the upper bole of the tree. The smallest Ips species is approximately one-sixteenth inch long and also attacks the upper section of the tree. The male Ips beetle will attack the stressed tree first, signaling others to follow with an infestation. If any resin is flowing, the tree will pitch out the first few beetles through boring holes, creating whitish to pinkish small pitch tubes on the bark plates. Depending on the Ips species, these pitch tubes may only exist in the upper trunk, making this tree symptom difficult to detect. Under droughty conditions, however, pitch tubes may not exist at all. The decline of the infested tree occurs more rapidly when attacked by Ips beetles than other bark beetles. The foliage changes color from green to reddish-brown in a matter of a few weeks. Some pines that are infested with the smaller-sized species will exemplify reddish-brown needles only in the upper section of the crown. In an infested pine, the adult beetle creates Y and H-shaped egg galleries underneath the bark. Like the southern pine beetle, this bark beetle also vectors a blue-stained fungus into the sapwood when creating galleries. This fungus spreads, enhancing feeding opportunities for the white legless larva, clogging the pine's vascular system. Streaks of bluish-black fungal stains are present in the sapwood. Soon the affected pine responds quickly from this combined action of girdling and desiccation. Eventually, the pine will succumb, approximately four to six weeks after the initial attack. This bark beetle species may remain active in the area for many months, producing anywhere from eight to ten generations a year, ready to spread to the next dying pine. Because the Ips engraver is not very aggressive, the need to take control measures is not as urgent. If there are only a few infested pines scattered in a stand, no control may be warranted. Natural predators such as the clarid beetle or natural environmental conditions such as a cold front may be enough to halt any new infestations. If numerous pines are infested, salvaging the affected area of the stand or harvesting the entire stand may be the best option. A large number of pines infested with the Ips engraver beetle may be an indication that the entire stand is stressed and susceptible to further beetle attack. For infested pines in a residential or commercial area, insecticides such as Dragnet or Onyx can be used. As a preventative method, the insecticide may be applied to unaffected pine trees that are in close proximity to infested ones.